Welcome back to the Being Found Show, your internet marketing helpline. Okay, in this segment. <laughs> it's already been hyped so much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What to, it's like a Michael Bay movie. Uh, so Sean runs around out there. Uh, he's interviewing customers. He's interviewing businesses. There's a lot of reasons he's doing this. He does it for our company so that we can stay in touch. Right. Um, and uh, we can be solving problems that, that businesses actually have. But... And uh, I do it for you, listeners. And that's right. And he does it for the <laughs> listeners. So what do you got, Sean? All right. So uh, just last night, actually, I was talking to... So last minute. Uh, yes, exactly. Okay. Um, it always works out that way. But right. I always get good stuff, I think. So okay. anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So I was talking to a friend of mine. He works as a software engineer. I'm not going to say the name of the company because I'm a... About to badmouth it a little bit. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> but I, I told him about the radio show. He thought it was very cool that I was on this, and I was like, "Hey, do you happen to have any juicy marketing stories from your job?" And he says, "Well, I have stories about how we suck at marketing." Oh. And I'm like, that is perfect. <laughs> Lay it on me. So, basically, the deal is this is a, a relatively small company, and it's a bunch of developers and software engineers, right? Um, and they they sell software. So they have – their website is their own custom CMS that fulfills their specific needs in terms of security and, you know, user interaction and all that kind of thing. You know, it, it works the way they want it to. Mm -hmm. But the entire system of marketing it, optimizing it, et cetera, belonged to two front-end developers – Okay. In this company. So two front end coders, developers. Yes. Not marketers. No, <laughs> not no. Not marketers. People who don't care about what the customer wants. Right. There, or anything. there are no marketers or writers or or anything like that involved. And then they got rid of one of the front end developers. Okay. So I, I know you know this is going to happen, but I'm going to sidetrack you for a second. And I hope this doesn't ruin your story. But if it does, you can use this as your excuse why the story was so bad. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. This is something we actually see all the time yeah. where because somebody has a technical skill set mm -hmm. that they're given the charge of running the website or the online marketing, exactly, which is the gateway to the customer, which means that you would want to know more about a customer, what they want than how HTML code works. Right. Like, we have a developer on our team, and he's a genius, but... But we have to keep in a box. Well... You can't uh, let him talk to anybody. Imagine he's... if we all went to the Bahamas and was, we're just like, you're in charge of the clients now. <laughs> yeah. Well, everything would uh, have all kinds of cool features. <laughs> yes, it, it would. Yeah. You know, it would be coded beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess my point in sharing this story mm -hmm. is that there's the stereotype of, oh, there's a bunch of technical people... So they'll get it. Right. But it, it's not all technical. And that's what we talk about all the time on this show is that, like, part of this succeeding at the Internet thing is being a web geek. But the vast majority of it is understanding your customers, understanding marketing, you know, strategizing. Did he relate to you any um, of the roadblocks that had come up from this or any of the adverse effects or – or any of the positive effects that had come from well, this situation? Well, the thing is, they they don't have time to work on the site. So they don't even know. Right. Well, so they have one front-end developer now, because mm -hmm. the other guy left. Mm -hmm. um, and so that guy's just making sure the site is running. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at he's adding features when management decides they want features. But what is not happening is optimizing, ordering content... You know, creating landing pages, researching keywords. This guy doesn't do any of that stuff. Now, let's let's translate that for a second. Let's actually connect that to what I talked about in the last segment mm -hmm. when I was going over the Google AdWords tool and it was telling me how many people were looking for right. stuff in any area. Um, because those those people that are running that website, they may not even know what opportunity there is for that website to be found or interact, right? They may not know. Mm -hmm. They may not know. Is it one person or 10,000 people that are looking exactly. for their site? 
And if they can start by identifying that, how, how many people are looking or might use this website, um, then, then they can start to extrapolate whether it's helpful or hurtful, right? It may be fine. Yeah. It may be doing great. And so let's imagine that they're a realtor because mm-hmm. that's another term I looked up here, okay? So mm-hmm. let's imagine that the people you're talking about are realtor or they're running a realtor website or application. They have a, uh, um, a tech person in charge of the website, um, but yet they have no idea how many right. people are looking for realtors or related things. In Shasta County, 6,000 people a month are looking for realtors related to realtors, maybe MLS listings, mm-hmm. houses for sale, and all that kind of thing. So now that tech geek that may be working with that realtor, is that tech geek going and looking at this opportunity of 6,000 people and adjusting the website to to get as much of that valid traffic and 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 users and customers from those 6,000 searches? Or are they just trying to make cool features and cool sites? Right. Do you see the see, connection? See, that's what it is. And it this is an issue of a mindset, you know. Yeah. They've got the skills, they've got the technology, they've got everything they need. They just aren't looking at the challenge in the proper way of let's find out what customers are you are doing. Right. And let's build what we're doing around that. It it's a top down let's think about features we think would be really cool. Yeah. And build those in. Yeah. Let's think about what the CEO wants or what exactly. the investors want. And meanwhile, nobody's bridging the gap or connecting to exactly. this 6,000 people that are looking for related ideas yeah. uh, to, to your product. Now, they may not all be valid, but are you identifying the valid ones and creating a website that talks to that, right? And one more thing on this. I said, well, you've got tech guys working on it. I, I'll bet the site's fast at least. Uh-huh. And... No, because <laughs> they're building in all these cool features that slow it down. <laughs> so it, I, I think this is kind of common, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we run into, I would say, more often people who just aren't engaging in the online world at all. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we get people who are the techiest people you imagine who just aren't going at it in the way that makes sense yeah. for today. And, and if you've listened to this show or talk to me anywhere, you'll know that that's almost the whole reason I went into this business mm-hmm. because I was one of the people who had to pay for these services. Right. Cause sometimes vendors kind of operate that way. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, and I had to pay for the service or I had a team that I had to pay on staff and we had to do both. Mm-hmm. And, um, what I realized was that, uh, they were kind of in charge. Um, yeah. they knew more than I did. And, and, and then I started finding that for most businesses, the geeks know more than the people running the business when it comes to the tech world, the online world, yeah. but they don't know enough that geeks don't know enough to, to lead you. You still as the business owner have to be the leader, right? It's not that right. they, it's not that they don't know enough cause they're bad or, or, or they didn't learn enough. It's cause they don't know enough about your business. So as a business owner, you still have to be in a position to lead that geek. Yeah. And that's really what the show's about. I'm circle all the way around. The show is about, <laughs> giving you the information, the rules and the tools to lead those geeks by knowing tools like this AdWords or or knowing that some of the rules are you still have to meet the customer's expectations. So that, that company that you talk to, how might this be different if the leadership knew for a fact how many people were looking for their kind of stuff and knew for a fact where they were mm-hmm. – where they were fitting in that, where, you know, were they getting some of that traffic or were they getting none of that traffic? Were people converting once they hit the website or were they not converting? How, how might that change that whole management and leadership of those two geeks running the site? Exactly. Yeah. It, it's, they have the resources to use to make this happen. Uh-huh. It, there, there just isn't anyone who understands it in the driver's seat. That's, that's right. That's Gosh, you problem. always say stuff better than I do. <laughs> okay. That's really... It's the driver's seat. Is that the seat. bombshell? That's that, the bombshell, That was yeah. I, what I was trying to go for there. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So what a great example. That's a company that um, there is nobody in the driver's seat, and it's assumed that mm-hmm. because the geeks understand the tech, right. that they're going to make the right decisions to grow the company. Um, yeah. and, I, and, and it's ironic that you brought it up because 
for me, one of the first things every business has to be able to do is go look at what is the online opportunity yeah. and then measure yourself or judge whether you're living up to it. Um, and so this is a perfect example. They're not, and they, and they don't, they don't know what they're missing. Yeah. Did they have anything right. good to say before we leave the segment? <laughs> Did they, um, is there something well, really cool to them? Look, I, w- I was talking to an employee okay. of the company, so All right. he wasn't interested in puffing them up or okay. anything. He was He's grouchy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, in, in a coming up segment, uh, there's three questions that I've really spent the last, I don't know, 10 years trying to figure out. And that was ever since the internet hit. There, there, things changed. Um, and they're just changing faster and faster and faster. And I really set out... And my own personal goal was to figure out what did this do to business? What did it change for business? But then I also wanted to figure out what stayed the same and what could you do about it? Why are you smiling? Uh, Why are you laughing? I, I feel like there's a rant that's about to happen, but... There's a recorded rant. <laughs> so the reason I bring all that up, because there is a rant. Um, Chauncey uh, Haworth, our, our uh, SEO chulk... He and I realized that um, both of us have been trying to answer those three questions. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, we started thinking that when we're talking to business owners, they're asking those three questions, um, all, all, always not in that order. But, the, you know, they're trying to figure out, what can I do yeah. about this? What, why, what changed? Why is it what I was doing not working anymore? Um, and, and, and some of the things that are working why are they working, right? Yeah. And so it's hard to get three straight answers. It is hard to get three straight answers. So we're actually going to set out with this show to answer those questions. I'm going to talk to a lot of experts, um, and we're really going to dig into those in segments. But one of the things Chauncey and I did is we we spent uh, uh, yesterday afternoon going over those things, and so we recorded some of that discussion, and I'm going to play it on the show today. So you'll hear a lot about that today. Okay, so you're listening to Being Found. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back.